know, it's going to take time, and uh, he, he'll find his way in the offense. And uh, the name sounds familiar to ACC historians. Uh, his dad played at Clemson back when I played. Had some great battles against him and in the NBA as well. Lampton wins the tip over Baycott, and the Cougars begin with a basketball. It's great to have you with us tonight, wherever you may be. And look for uh, Lampton to get a little scripted play here, see if they can get something to him off the back cut. Well defended by Baycott. Dalton Boland takes love baseline and scores. Well, this, uh, this first five minutes or so, it's going to be very important for the College of Charleston. Good start for them. Very aggressive. They had a very upbeat practice and shoot around today. 11 to shoot. Black finds Caleb Love. Deep three. And the rebound track for Jalen Scott, who averaged about 19 points per game last year at Bethel Junior College. Deeper look that time for Bolin. He comes up short. The rebound last touch by Carolina. It's Charleston Ball. But that last possession, the college Cougars will they'll settle for that shot with Caleb Love anytime. You know, try to keep him out of the lane, let him shoot long jump shots. Gonna stay the same way. Roger Ayers, John Gaffney, and Jamel Spearman. The three officials presiding tonight. College of Charleston, 17 and 15 a year ago, as Pat Kelsey's first season in the Low Country after a long and successful tenure at Winthrop. Obviously, ACC roots for the Charleston coach. Long time under Skip Prosser at Wake Forest. Also worked with Dino Gaudio after Skip tragically passed away. When you're around Pat Kelsey, you can't help but share oh. Skip Prosser memories. No, and uh, you know, he played me a, a high compliment saying seeing me brought back memories of Skip and I first came to start broadcasting the league when they had their run in the early 2000s. But uh, you know, he is just a walking five hour energy. Uh, just uh, so much enthusiasm. Baycott banging with Lampton and the foul called on the senior from Roanoke, Texas. First foul against the Cougars. 85 seconds gone. And the Tar Heels were not exactly in sync offensively in their opener on Monday. Pat Kelsey's assistant, Brian Coleman, was maybe asking the officials to check on a potential elbow to the face, but they move on. Wide open look from the corner. Black buries it. And that's one that they were going to live with in the scouting report. Black, not a great shooter, but uh, what a nice start for him. You saw how wide open he was. Lampton missed it. Baycott battling for the board. Lampton creates another possession. This is the one thing the Cougars very good on the offensive glass. North Carolina makes a point of emphasis to rebound the ball. Oh, what a block by Pete Nance. And then Diamond the floor is blocked. Love contact. And he'll get to the line. Well, here's the thing. This is, you know, just great man-on-man -man defense right there. Times it. Cuts off Scott. Gets the block, and then they retain possession. And that's where North Carolina is really at their best, and as they have been for years, is out in the open floor. Caleb Love so very difficult to guard in that situation and they get an early foul on Rain Smith. Yep, his first. Caleb scored 17 on Monday night and went over Wilmington. Let's take a quick look at the keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealer. What you got tonight, G-Man? Well, for and uh, Pat Kelsey talked about be great at us. He just wants them to stay within themselves but be at their very best against this team here, the number one team in the nation. And for North Carolina, Hubert Davis not happy with the rebounding in game one. They want to come back strong in that category. Two for two at the line for Love. Beautiful ball movement. Bolin's got all four for the Cougars. Yeah, and with the smaller lineup out there, they'll lift. There's no real center presence for the Cougars. It's it's they have great spacing, and you really have to talk on those back screens. Beautiful offense that time. 
Scott went for the steal. Came up empty. Davis sets his feet. And Nance comes up with another loose ball. Fai rebounds the miss from Love. Babacar Fai, 6'8 from Senegal. Out of the NBA Academy in Africa. Gives them a completely different look from Lampton. Bolin. They call him Psycho D. Comes up empty. Roger Ayers saying to Ryan Larson, it's either Carolina ball or a foul. Which one do you want? <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll go back and play defense. There's Psycho D. No relation to Psycho T. But, I'm, you know, if, if you're the College of Charleston, pack it in. Make North Carolina prove themselves from the perimeter. Don't let them have anything easy inside. I love that moment. Roger Ayers and Larson right in front of us. Ayers obviously as accomplished as any official in the sport. Somehow, Raekwon Horton able to keep the dribble alive through the pressure. Rain Smith made five threes on opening night for the Cougars. And they have Leaky Black on him, a big cover and their best perimeter defender. That's going to be a tough defense for Smith. Fai takes it. And Larson sneaks in, gets his hand, and creates another possession. Smith unable to pay it off. You see the hustle for the offensive boards. Tar Heels in transition. It's a block, and it's a bucket for Black. And Pat Kelsey cannot believe the call. And I, I, at first look, that looks like a that looks like a charge to me, but a, a very bang bang play. That being said, Leaky Black has had a nice start to this game offensively. Do you think it's a different whistle at TD Arena compared to the Dean Smith Center? They're not here, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Just an unconscious and, 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 bias that goes into and, and, things like and, and, and that. And actually, you know, in, 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 in practice, that Kelsey was looking for five charges from his team. He knew he was going to get two from Ryan Larson. And, uh, he thought he had one there for sure. Cougars are two for ten offensively to start the game. Foul's caught on Love. First on Caleb. And it takes us to a timeout. 5.15 gone here in Chapel Hill. Photo who kind of weighed in heavily on that year. <laughs> They're in their run to the championship in Who 1982. Some guy named Mike. I think it was called Mike at that point. But um, yeah, great stuff. And uh, you know, so happy for Hubert Davis. Had a terrific year last year. Set up the inbounds play for Ryan Larson's three. Battle for the board, and two Cougars were fighting over it and went out of bounds. Come up with it. Well, you know. For, for College of Charleston, they're getting shots. Yep. They haven't turned the ball over. They're not making shots to this point. They're getting offensive rebounds. And Baycott has not touched the ball so far in the game, so they've kept the ball out of his hands. Seth Trimble, the first man off Hubert Davis's bench tonight. And a travel called on R.J. Davis' first Carolina turnover. A lot of conversation about the Tar Heel bench coming into the season. And Hubert Davis is excited to mix and match the different pieces he has to see what works. I love Seth Trimble. I was watching the practice yesterday, and uh, you will you will see some different combinations with him out on the floor and the ball in his hands. Plus, he is a lockdown defender. Different level of quickness from Trimble. Larson with a left hand gets two. Nice well, finish that time. Gave him the clear out. Trimble beats everyone down. Well, see, that's a function of Larson getting that layup. They had no transition defense back, and that's just too easy after a made basket. You've got to have people on the other side back rotating defensively if you're Ch College of Charleston. Busy 46 seconds for Trimble. He gets a bucket and then picks up the foul at the other end. Pat Kelsey has sent uh, Ben Burnham into the game. Sophomore from Fort Mill, South Carolina. As a freshman, he had a big game against the Tar Heels 17 a year ago. Quick hands from Black. 
Horton able to maintain possession. This is Burnham. To start that possession, everybody for the College of Charleston lifted it above the free throw line. What are they trying to do, do you think? Just live, just cutting lanes, back screens. Oh, tremendous anticipation by Leaky Black. And R.J. Davis fouled by Burnham. Now that's, you know, Hubert Davis, you love the block, but you want to get the initial rebound. Right. And uh, I'm sure that he's a little uh, upset so far about the Cougars' presence on their offensive glass. Five offensive rebounds so far for Charleston. Here's the thing, I mean, you know, they're fighting inside, but great, and that's the thing with Leaky Black. Six, eight, long arms, quick reaction, quick off the floor. Leakey making his 99th career start for the Tar Heels tonight. Playing in his 124th game for UNC. Davis pops and hits. He's cleared that side two-person game with him and Baycott. Strong take, Jalen Scott. Going right at the big man, too, which is what you want to do. Take away his shot-blocking ability, go right through the body. Long two, won't go. Rebound for Pat Robinson, the third. One of the several D2 transfers on this Cougars roster. And Baycock comes up with a loose ball. Holy Charleston will play 10 people in this game. They'll have a lot of bodies in and out. Mondo. Offensive foul. Sometimes he can get into trouble when he puts the ball on the floor and uh, good anticipation. They really worked on that in their film session today, anticipating that spin back. Good call. Sold well by Fye. And he'll take a seat after taking the hit. They do, you know, the, the Cougars have a lot of bodies that they can throw up front. A lot of fouls they can burn. Croatian big man. Ante Perzovic into the game, and the three is good for Bowling. He's got seven of Charleston's first 11. Acock, after picking up the foul, the previous possession, comes up empty this one. Charleston can take the lead here. Really converging on him. Three bodies around him on that shot. Open look. Burnham buries it. Back-to-back -back threes for the Cougars. Eight-nothing spurt. Over the last 75 seconds. And that's going to draw Baycott out. Their bigs can shoot threes. Now Mike, we are over seven minutes again. In Pete Nance hasn't taken a shot yet. He's one for one. And a flop warning was just assessed to Charleston. It's going to put a lot of pressure on the referees that time. And uh, see, the thing that bailed Nance out, he didn't put his shoulder down that time, and that's why there was a no call. He did a good job keeping his balance and finishing the play. There's no warning anymore, so that's a technical foul, and Caleb Love's at the line. Just made the free throw for the Tar Heels. Ties the game. So it's a technical foul on Horton, the flopper. No team foul, no personal foul, but it is his first tech. Tenth meeting ever between these two programs. Cougars have beaten UNC three times, including once when the Tar Heels were in the top five. Ante Berzovic, the Croatian big man, gets on the board. Nice patience that time. They're going to let Nance guard him one-on-one, -on -one, so he got a few dribbles and was able to back him down low. Good finish with his off offhand. Here's DeMarco Dunn. Dontrez Styles in the game as well. Dunn rises up. Horton tracks down the miss. You can see it there, but uh, people in North Carolina talking about how well that he's improved. Oh. Basket. Oh my goodness. 
Didn't look like anybody in North Carolina was expecting that. That was explosive. Pat Kelsey pointed to Raekwon Horton yesterday as Caleb Love answers. He said, that guy, Raekwon Horton, is an athletic beast. <laughs> we just saw it up close and personal. See, look, at you got five guys out. There's a lot of driving lanes, and the bigs are hitting threes. Berzovic, a quick five off the bench, extending the Cougars' lead to five. Nate, after missing her first five threes, made their last three in a row. Caleb Love, air ball on the glass. Styles keeps it alive. And that'll be a kick ball. Raekwon Horton giving us an early candidate for highlight of the night, G-Man. Yeah, they get, get into that right hand. Fearless going inside. Horton for their last five after starting four of 16, G-Man. And it's been inside and out. Good work inside that time. Brzovic with his left hand. And then this finish really got his team ignited. They've been knocking down threes as well. So a good balance inside and out. Nice spacing in the offense. Playing with a lot of confidence right now, Evan. And Already 10 different guys have played for Pat Kelsey. Six of them have scored. And uh, bench bench points 10 to 2 in favor of the Cougars, too. So those guys are they're coming in and producing as well. And the thing that Pat Kelsey talked about was it's going to maybe different guys on different nights. I mean, the minutes are going to be sort of the same, but uh, they, they've got different guys who can contribute. I, I think, too, you know, we talk about him building this program and he's such an infectious guy and he came there were two guys last year on that team and he called it the great experiment and he was able to cobble together a terrific season the thing I, I think they might have found something in going through the portal to the division two guys getting really good players from that level to come up and step up and uh, he may have found something there Pat Kelsey very excited about the class that he just signed a couple days ago yep. the number one mid-major class in the country four-star combo guard Isaiah Coleman four-star Mayor Wool, and then a three-star big man from Fayetteville James Scott at least one of those guys is here tonight I spent a lot of time in Charleston it is a beautiful city and it, it's a great sell for a recruit DeMarco Dunn his second bucket of the season. Good finish off the drive that time. Not a lot of shot blocking out there for the College of Charleston. So if you get to the rim, you can finish. Five guys on the perimeter. Larson off balance comes up empty. Styles the rebound and Seth Trimble running the offense here. It's a little smaller team. Nifty dish by Nance. Dunn wasn't expecting it. Excuse me, Styles. Yeah, and uh, Nance a great passer, though, and he's playing the five right now, so it gives him a different look with Baycott out of the game. And they'll stay with Charleston. Cougars went back and forth in their Monday game against Chattanooga. Took a 17-15 lead with about eight minutes to go in the first half and never trailed again. 85-78 was the final. Well, and this is the pace that they play at, so they're, they're not going to try to slow or <laughs> eat any clock against North Carolina. They like an up-tempo game as well. Literally the fastest pace team in the country a year ago. Bolin, quick shot, sticks it over Caleb Love. Love with his hands down that time, and uh, Bolin, is, he's, he's caught fire as well. The three-point shot, a nice weapon. Ten points for Bolin, largest lead. Love tries to respond with authority. And Bolin fouled him on the arm. He's not just quick, Caleb Love. He is springing. And, and, you know, can go either way. Can go right, left, finish in that time. And I, and I like the aggressiveness to go in, get to the free throw line, quit settling for jump shots, attack the rim. Monday night was Caleb's 50th time in his Tar Heel career scoring in double figures. And he is closing in on the thousand point plateau. If he makes both of these, he'll be just 50 points away. We'll pause for a moment. Quick word from Works Nitro. Meet Works Nitro.
this is the line for Love. He's 51 away from 1,000. Well, and the thing about Caleb Love is that he can have horrible stretches, but then explode at just the right time and wind up with huge games. Does Hubert Davis have to be a different kind of patient with Caleb and wait out the stretches that aren't going so well? Yeah, I mean, you're gonna, you know who he is at this point, and uh, you know, he's not going to change. That was on Styles. And that being said, I mean, you know, Colin Charleston finds himself in this game with Smith not having scored so far, their leading score. Great point. Only taking one shot. Horton draws contact. And he'll get free throws. And the thing you like about Horton is he's got a strong body, and they are not afraid to post him up against other wings inside. To Marco Dunn. Five different Tar Heels with one foul apiece. Pat Kelsey, in his nine years at Winthrop, he became the fifth all time winningest coast coach in the history of the Big South Conference. Averaging about 20, 21 wins a year. You know, it was funny, I asked him, like, how you, you know, what, what was the draw there? And he said, well, a lot of people from Ohio go down to the low country to vacation. Yeah. So he said, he's been coming down to Charleston in that area for years. And it was it was really a natural fit for him and his family. Nine minutes to play in the half. Tar Heels down seven. Love comes up short. Rebound tapped out to Dunn. Steps into the jumper. Cans it. Well, he looks really confident in his game. Speaking of confidence, Rain Smith for three. Beautiful extra pass that time, unselfish. You want to get your guy into the game, get him some rhythm. Styles, no. Five the rebound. Chance to extend the lead to double figures here. Five. Back outside for Horton. Horton beats Davis, sets up the best shooter, and Smith comes up empty. It'll be Tar Heels ball. You know, the thing, Evan, in getting this lead, the Cougars have not let North Carolina run the ball out. They've had to work in the half court, and that's because the offense has been very efficient. North Carolina has been taking the ball out of the basket. College of Charleston able to set their defense in the half court. This just game one of a doubleheader tonight. Virginia Cavaliers, who Mike, you saw on Monday up in Charlottesville, taking on Monmouth at 9 o'clock. Bob Rathbun and Brian Oliver are getting set to call that one from Charlottesville. Interesting first dozen minutes here tonight. A oh, love off the dribble. Explodes to the bucket. They gave him that whole right side. There was no help. Quick shot, Charleston. Quick rebound. What a pass ahead. Black to Baycott. And a foul. You can just feel the energy in this building crescendo when the Tar Heels play fast. And you triggered it. Quick shot, and that just leads to a run out every time with North Carolina. And he is our Hardy's star to watch. He's got a quick 10 points against the number one team in the land. And it really showed a lot of versatility in offense. Great back screen that time, which is the staple of this offense. He's shown the ability to knock down the three. He can also get into the lane area. Four or six for him, very efficient scoring so far in double figures. He's been around college basketball for a long time. He redshirted his true freshman year back in 2016-2017. Played four years at West Liberty, where he was the conference freshman of the year, and then a three-time Division II All-American. 
taught a class there, yeah. too. He came to Charleston last year, played the first three games, suffered a foot injury, got a medical hardship. So with the COVID year, this is what, his 15th year of college basketball? I've lost track. Yes, uh, dean of students now down at the College of Charleston. <laughs> but, uh, but a great story, and uh, so far, a great first half for him. The 41% three-point shooter in over 800 attempts at West Liberty. One thing, a little bit of a flag for North Carolina early. Only two assists so far in the game on nine made field goals. So a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. Yeah. That is half as many as they had in yeah. Monday's game. What a bizarre statistic. Four assists on 22 field goals on Monday. Fewest assists since a double overtime loss to Texas A&M in the 1980 NCAA tournament. There's, you know, we're talking about Baycott on the lineup. There's one weakness for him, Evan. It's it's here. 67 percent last year. Had a rough night against uh, uh, UNC Williams. Six of 11 from the line. Well, Mondo has played nine minutes. He's got one point and one rebound. After 31 well, double doubles a year ago, tying the NCAA record. But defensively against this team, he's lifted away from the basket a lot. He's chasing outside. Playing defense inside this possession on the big Croatian who scores Ante Berzovic. No double team again, just taking his time. Nice spin move. Got to guard him against that left hand. Charleston showing impressive depth in this first half. Bench point scoring now 14 to 6. Marco Dunn with four off the Tar Heels bench. Davis cash from the corner. Tell you what, he's he gets sometimes overlooked, I think, on this ball club. He is a terrific player. You could argue he's the best player on the team. Yeah, I can make a very strong argument for that. That was a good pass if he was trying to get it to a guy in the third row. Love the energy of this crowd. Fans were filing in good 90 minutes before tip-off tonight. Opening week of the season. Number one Tar Heels, preseason number one for the 10th time. Breaking the tie, of course, with your Blue Devils, who have been preseason number one nine times. I'll tell you what, it's it's a whole different vibe. You become the game, not like you weren't that way anyway, as, as North Carolina on your jersey, but with that number one ranking, whole different deal. Five quick points the last couple trips for R.J. Davis. Missed three from Robinson, but another offensive rebound, the sixth of the game for Charleston. And they pay it off with Burnham inside. Second chance opportunities. Those threes, the perimeter for North Carolina is going to have to hang in there a little bit more and get long rebounds. And Burnham, his first two tonight, he had 17 last year against UNC. Tyler Nickel. Baycott tips it out. Leaky Black knocks it down. You can see they're still daring him. He knocked down that three early from the same exact spot. That is a huge lift for this offense. Second three tonight for Leakey. He's now got 50 from downtown in his Look career. Out. But Horton right down the boulevard. Just that spacing creates great cutting lanes and driving lanes. And <laughs> Horton is showing me some skills here in the first half. Fouls on Burnham away from the ball, and that's going to be his second. Mike, on Monday night, Hubert Davis was very pleased with the North Carolina defense. The offense wasn't quite in sync. I think it's a little bit of a different story tonight. Yeah, and uh, well, and uh, you know, especially defensively, this uh, this College of Charleston team, they were fearless coming into this game. Uh, they, you know, they were getting shots early, not making them. All of a sudden, they settled in, and the offense started to click inside and outside. So Armando Baycott going back to the line. One for two, his first trip. It's the front end of the one and one. I think Charleston's done a good job staying true to themselves, being us as they put it. Yeah. And, and they're, they're being them at a high level. What a move by Dalton Bolin. <laughs> Punching himself in the head, living up to his nickname. Nickel attacks baseline. Lampton late getting over that time in, in the rotation.
you say, you know, the versatility these guys are showing, not to, you know, Boland, not just the threes, but, and then taking their time, no double team, recognizing that they can go one on one in the paint, not being in a big hurry. Lampton just picked up his second. Mike, I want to correct myself. I thought Burnham was getting called for the foul the previous possession away from the ball when Baycott went to the line, missed the front end, but it was Berzovich. So Burnham actually, no fouls in the game. Lampton, the first player in the game with two. And Tyler Nickel has his first point as a Tar Heel. Scored over 2,900 points in his high school career in the mountains in Virginia. Grew up in Harrisonburg. And he's two for two at the line. Home of our ACC all-time great Ralph Sampson. And he had a pretty good career. Yeah, not bad. Three-time National Player of the Year. He would have made some money in NIL, you would think. <laughs> Robinson. Lampton on the weak side has the rebound because Baycott went for the block. And that was a block that he wasn't going to get, and it just gave Lampton all kinds of room to wait on that offensive rebound. Sometimes you have to stay at home and take care of the glass. Davis lost his dribble. Pretty good defense there from Pat Robinson, the third. Black's feeling it right now. He's got 10 first half points. Uh, and who would have thought uh, before this game started, Leaky Black was bailing this team out offensively. He's four for four from the field, including two threes. He's been terrific. Burnham has size. This match shoots over Love. Battle for the board. It's going to stay with Charleston. We'll get ourselves a timeout. Tar Heels getting a test tonight against the Cougars. Kind of bailed out North Carolina's offense. He's made all his shots. He's got 10 points. Well, look, I mean, there's not a defender within 15 feet of him. They are daring him to take that shot, and he's come up big and uh, using his size right there. He's Now he's starting to feel a little bit of a rhythm. Now, I think, if you're College Charleston, you got to change your game plan and come out and defend him a little bit more. It's his 124th college basketball game. And the vast majority, he has not scored in double figures. Today, the 13th career double figure scoring game for Leakey. Speaking about double figures, how about Bowen? He was 3 for 10 from the floor on opening night for Charleston. That has not deterred his confidence at all. He's 5 for 7, make it 6 of 8. 14 points for Bolin. Take your pardon, 15 for Bolin in the first half. Davis, in and out. Rebound tipped. Love finds it. Cross court sets up Nickel for 3. Nice find across court that time. Nickel spotting up on the opposite baseline. Freshman starting to get a little confidence now. Got 80 points on the board with three minutes to play in the first half. This is a fun say, Friday night. Let's let's look at 0-0 right now in the last three minutes. See if North Carolina can make a run here. If you're the College of Charleston, you've done a nice job of carving a lead. You don't want to see that evaporate going into the locker room. Charleston led by six at the half last year, had a lead as large as 11. UNC didn't leave until Brady Manick hit a triple. Under 17 minutes to play in the second half. And it was still a one-point game late. Bolin had the hot hand for Charleston. You know, whoever has the hot hand, Leaky Black is going to find him. They, they put him on Bolin to try to calm him down. Nickel goes down. Nice dish inside and a strong finish. Babakar Fai gets his first points inside. Again, uh, it's it's a different game with uh, you know without Baycott out there. Nickel outside for Nance. Heat one for two so far. Lost it, recovers, and then just threw up a prayer. Still almost went in, but Fai has the rebound. Nine different players have scored for Charleston. Scott swatted away by Nance. Second block of the game for him. Nickel attacks. Blocking foul and free throws coming for Tyler Nickel. 
who is a big time scorer at East Rockingham High School, averaged 28 and a half per game for his career. And uh, again, uh, one of the few runouts that North Carolina has had, but it's all triggered by the block on the other end. Psycho D just picked up his second personal foul for Charleston. And it looks like Pat Kelsey is going to take him out of the game. Ryan Larson. Yeah, they may come in with, they're going to come in with Burnham too as well. Replacing Bolton, uh, Bolin and Horton. But it's, you know, with the thing too about the Cougars, when they substitute, there's not a big drop off. No. These guys are coming in and producing. Pat Kelsey is six guys back from last year, including four sophomores who he says played enough as freshmen that they're basically juniors, juniors now. Yeah, they grew up. It happens. Burnham throws it away, but Davis can't corral it. Better help off the drive that time by North Carolina. Game number 41 for Hubert Davis as head coach of the Tar Heels. He's 30 and 10. Leaky Black with a quick hands got a tough bye. Finds a cutter. Larson, tough bucket. And he's undersized too, but not afraid to go in there. Pretty nice move, little floater in the paint. G Man, both teams are shooting exactly 50% right now. Cougars, 19 of 38. Tar Heels are 14 of 28. Do the math. Ten additional field goal attempts for Charleston. That's a large byproduct of the offensive, offensive rebounds. rebounds. Yep. Eight offensive rebounds for them in this game. But the thing they like too, they're not turning the ball over. They're getting shots. Nance in the double bonus. Tar Heels get two free throws after the five foul. The North Carolina not taking advantage of the free throw line to this point. Eight of 14 now. But getting to the line, just leaving some points there. It's been almost 13 minutes since North Carolina had a lead. See the free throw disparity, but Charleston, despite that, not just hanging around, but dictating tempo at the offensive end. One of two for Nance. Most of Pat Kelsey's Winthrop teams played really fast, and he has brought the fast tempo to the low country. Baseline jumper is good. Ante Berzovich off the bench with nine first half points. And he's perfect from the floor, as along with a made three as well. Caleb Love. Scott the other way. Forty seconds in the half. Berzovich had it poked away by Baycock. That was the postman's edition of the heat check. Davis finger roll too. It's really been Davis and Leaky Black that have uh, carried North Carolina offensively. Pat Kelsey takes his use it or lose it timeout. What an interesting first half this has been. We protect the paint, brought to you by CPI Security. A couple first half blocks for Pete Nance. Yeah, it's been Nance and Leaky Black who have done the, uh, and, and most time, and the times they've gotten those blocks, they've triggered breaks down the other end of the floor. Four blocks in the half for Carolina. Are you surprised that the Tar Heels haven't gotten more offense in the first half from the two big men, Baycott and Nance? Well, the thing that the College of Charleston has done a nice job, there's been just a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball for North Carolina. It's been guys who, you know, kind of facing up, doing things off the dribble. Uh, the Cougars have allowed Leaky Black to get some shots, which he's knocked down and come up big with. But there really haven't been a lot of opportunities inside for the big players. They haven't gotten a lot of touches in there. 
Shot clock is off here, so the Cougars take the final shot if they'd like. Jalen Scott, marked by Pete Nance. Ten and a half. Scott going one on one, sets up Berzovich for three. Puts it in. Ante Berzovich with a dozen off the bench for Charleston in the first half. The Cougars hang half a hundred on the heels. This is a guy who had three points. Good. Well, Cougars had a six. Fifth some shots here to get him in some rhythm for this last 20 minutes. He really wasn't a factor in that first half. Tar Heels begin the second 20 with possession. Quick touch for Baycott, who had just one point and just one rebound in the first half. Nance feeds him inside. Baycott doubled, plays through it, and scores. They came along the baseline with the double team. Baycott really showing some good patience, turning away from that, finishing with that right hand. First field goal for Armando. And a bad pass. Love with a skip to his step. Uh, and Bolan didn't want to pick up the third foul early here in the half, so he had to give a little bit of ground that time, and that was a terrific finish. Crowd all of a sudden into the game. Rain Smith cannot hit the mute button. That is an offensive foul on R.J. Davis to the dismay of everyone clad in Carolina blue. Davis <laughs> hanging the crowd on a little bit. Uh, ooh. Boy, just the, that, that uh, takes a lot to step in there. Larson just giving it up, but that's what he does. I mean, he is he is so tough. He takes charges in games. Pat Kelsey needs, he said he needs two of him, two charges a game from him. Ryan Larson's career began playing for Mike Young at Wofford. Another bad pass. Good anticipation. The steal for Leaky Black. Black to Baycott. it away from Lampton inside and a foul on Charleston whole different energy from UNC to start the second half yeah they needed that to just break up the rhythm College of Charleston really fell into an easy rhythm in that first half shooting uh, they've been a little more frenetic here recapturing the energy I mean, recapturing the whole vibe from the end of last year is virtually impossible. It's, new, it, it's, it's all new. So this, this team has to create a new vibe and their own, distinct from last year. How did you go about doing that 40-something years ago when it was all feeling different? It's, it's, it's not easy. It, it, people think it's going to happen in the first one or two games, and it's not for this ball club. I guarantee you. Dance from the corner. They caught a whole different factor on the glass. In the first minute, 44 of the second half. And Evan, and, and the thing is, I mean, even as, even as storied as this program is, for this group, playing with the number one ranking is really hard every single game. Monday was their first time playing as number one since November of 15. When he's making those shots, this team is really dangerous. Great start to the second half. Bowling with a big bucket to quiet the crowd. What an answer. 16 for Dalton Bowling. That's his career high as a Cougar in just his fifth game. Three last year, two this year. Love, the floater, gets the bounce. You, he, he wasn't invisible in the first half, but he has come out with a completely different energy as well. First time out of the second half taken by Charleston.
the Dean Dome tonight. That's Mia Hamm sitting to the left of the legendary statistician Freddie Kiger, who's a hero in his own right. <laughs> Courtside here in Chapel Hill. 9-2 run for the Tar Heels start the second half. And really, it's been the defensive end of the floor that's triggered this whole thing. It just, the energy there, the points they've gotten as a result, uh, just playing a, just a completely different team from that first 20 minutes. Caleb Love, seven points so far in the second half. Jalen Scott, big bucket over Baycock. Hey, he's, he's strong. He can get to that right hand, and he's shown the ability to finish in the lane, regardless of who's in there. Baycock, mismatch, double, doesn't matter. Yeah, he gets to catch that deep. He did a nice job keeping the ball up and finishing. Extra pass to the corner. In and out. Fly another offensive rebound. Ninth of the game for the Cougs. That'll put a body on people from North Carolina ball watching at this point. Scott goes over Davis this time and scores again. Boy, and it was Smith who set a really tough screen that time. He was open on the top, but they got the finish inside. It was three Cougar turnovers that really allowed UNC to take the run. Which they didn't do in the first half. They did a nice job taking care of the ball. Good defense the there. Second turnover of the half, just a fifth of the game. Bolin sets his feet. Wide left. Third rebound for Leaky Black. That, that three-point percentage should come down in the second half for the College of Charleston. Caleb, two more. I talked about it. I mean, he can go along and call and all of a sudden explode on you. Horton, no, he skipped past the defender, but then off balance did not convert. North Carolina comes up shy with the three. Trying to take their first lead since the 14-14 mark of the first half. Horton goes at Baycott, brings it back outside. So many fans around the Dean Smith Center on their feet, trying to implore the Tar Heels to defend. And they do. Five minutes gone, second half. Love on the attack, contact, no whistle, but Baycott is there. And the foul. Heels back in front, getting the big man involved. Already nine points in the second half. Just so active defensively, and this is where he's most dangerous. I talked about it earlier, no secret out in the open floor, but then he just gets into rhythm, and uh, you know, those shots, those are not easy shots that he's taking, but nice pull up floater that time, under control. You'll live with some of the heat check shots that he's taken in this stretch. And the other thing, Love's gotten hot. Baycott has gotten involved. Caleb and Mondo have all 15 points for the Tar Heels in the second half. Playing off one another, too. You and I watched North Carolina practice yesterday. What? And you thought the energy was fine, but it wasn't championship level. And Hubert Davis talked to his team after the practice about, we got to have fun. We got to play without a burden of expectations on our shoulders. Yeah, and it's it's hard. Again, that's this is one of the other things that that's hard to manage. I mean, you know, and uh, you know, have some joy out there, especially early on. But uh, if you notice, no substitute so far for North Carolina to, to this point in the half. He's gone with his starters. on the dribble cross lane feed and a foul is going on Baycott before the shot from five 
the second on Armando Bacon, who said coming into this season, thinking about what he needs to do to get ready to play at the next level, he said, I know at the NBA, I'm not going to be some big time scorer. He said, I'm just trying to be that janitor. Everybody needs a janitor that does all the little things, underappreciated things. Mindset. Well, I, but the thing too about him, the beautiful move and time by Vernon, that you know, with Bacon, are, are people going to start to question if he doesn't put up those gaudy double double numbers like he did last year? Is he having not as good a season? And that may not be the case. Right. Well, you worry about that when you have four guys coming back yeah, like just, they did. That's yeah, just the noise, and it's just a solid, you know, solid move inside. He's clearly gotten into a rhythm. He's gotten some touches. Orton gets into the paint, sets up Berzovic. Another offensive rebound, and Horton finishes. Just There were a lot of white jerseys around the ball that time, and they can't let that offensive rebound happen. Ten offensive rebounds, ten second chance points. And a steal. Horton intercepts the pass. Robinson can't finish in the first try, but he stays with it. I tell you, I've, I've been impressed. There have been some moments in this second half where it looked like the game could get a little out of shape, but uh, the Cougars have had an answer. Back in front by one. At this end of the floor, Tar Heels have made six of their last seven shots. Love. Oh, Robinson thought he got it clean. Jamel Spearman. Uh, thought otherwise. The guide is if the ball goes up in the air, you probably got hand. If the ball goes straight down, then you got a steal. Good rule of thumb. So Caleb Love to the line. Caleb Love to the line. Missed a free throw in the first half. Don't see that very often. Is there a point? In that 79 season, Mike, after going to the final, losing to Kentucky, being preseason number one, where you felt settled in, or did that burden stick with you all year long? No, because we went, we went down to Clemson, ranked number one in the country, and lost our first ACC game down there. And being the over to dad, the Pete Nance's dad. Yeah, and uh, you know that that just showed us again. You know how the ACC was viewing us at that point. <laughs> the Clemson was always a tough place to go and play. After Caleb missed his second free throw of the night, he's charged with a foul at the other end, which will send Pat Robinson the third to the line. But you got to remember too, Ed. At no point last year was this team ranked number one. Right. This team it was a shot they were going to get to the team. final four. So they never had to deal with that aspect. Two for Robinson. Baycott. Back outside. Nickel, the first man off the bench in the second half, and he's going to get himself to the free throw line. Tyler Nickel does not want to be thought of as just a shooter. Mike wants to be thought of as a scorer. Right, and that's the thing, too, that he's going to be showing it here. You know, he's, he's mixing his game up. He can spot up and shoot the three. He's not going down earlier, but also at least putting in the scouting report that he can put the ball on the floor and get to the rim. 19-year-old freshman. Smooth stroke. Tar Heels back in front. Four or five in the second half from the free throw line, so improves it there. Fifth lead change of the night. There have been eight ties, as you see. Charleston with the largest lead of eight. Berzovic. Got it. And that's a tough cover for Bacon. He's got to close out. Berzovic has knocked that shot down. You've got to get a handout contest. And, uh, <laughs> They kind of looking over at the bench saying, I don't know if I, I don't know how to get out there. 
15 points for Bursevich, who had three points in the first game of the year for Charleston. That's, that, that is the way you get to Bursevich. Make him defend and get fouls on him. Akon has played with a whole different mentality in the second half. Yeah. Much more active, presenting himself inside, making a target. So I got a three-point play for you down the other way. Second foul. Actually gave it to Robinson, not it, according to the official stats. Dozen second half points now for Armando Baycott. And this is what they like about Tremble, being able to pick up three-quarter full court defensively. And a quick foul on Nickel. His first. Well, I think if you'd ask Pat Kelsey coming in, would you take a 12-minute game, which is what you find yourself in right now? I think he'd say yes. 12 minute game, 0 0. Cougars led by one last year with six and a half to go. They've beaten North Carolina a few times historically. Oh, nice move inside. Penn, Burnham, and one. Front line for the Cougars has been very impressive in this game. Not intimidating. Athletic Association. We remind you to stay tuned for the fast break presented by your local Ford dealer coming up a little bit later here in the second half. You know, the players walk by that every single day, Evan, and it keeps you accountable. You know, it, it, it reminds you every single day of the standard uh, that you have to set every time you go out on the floor and what's expected of you. You need a certain mentality to be able to handle that pressure and the expectations that go with it. Burnham had a chance to extend the lead and complete the three-point play. Couldn't do it. Caleb Love off the dribble. And he'll get to the line. This is the look, and it's going to be interesting to see as this season unfolds with uh, Nance really as the five stepping in with Baycott when he's out of the game. One thing to note, you mentioned just the four assists on Monday night, G-Man. Tar Heels have nine assists so far tonight on 24 field goals. Caleb Love himself has four assists. A year ago, North Carolina was 14-0 when Caleb Love had at least five assists in a game. Well, and Caleb Love is also their leading rebounder by a lot with seven. So really filling up every line on the stat sheet. See, they, with this group out there, they're, they're, they're a little bit better suited to defend the three for the bigs from the uh, from College of Charleston. Nance can get out and guard that shot. Burnham. Defended by Nickel. Travel. Just in a hurry to attack the freshman inside. Nickel actually earning himself a little playing time in this game in the second half. No question about it. He played eight minutes now, more than he played on Monday. Isolation down there. His feet. There you see the, the movement of the feet. Stop. 68, 68, 11 and a half to play. Pete Nance still hasn't really left his imprint on the game. He draws contact on the drive here. I think it's going on first of it. And that possession, they really tried to front Baycott for the first time in the low post to try to keep him from catching. Actually gave it to Burnham. Number two on Ben Burnham. Marcy gets a breather. Psycho D is back into the game. Dalton Bowling. 24-year-old graduate student from Ohio. And look, Pete Nance is not Brady Manning. Every broadcaster for every North Carolina game this year is going to want to make that comparison and 
talk about the difference between the two. It's just the reality of the situation with him being the one newcomer in the starting lineup. But I think, and then, you know, you're also going to be working Trimble in and, uh, you know, Nickel. You've got guys who are hurt. Puff Johnson has not played so far. So there's still some bodies to be incorporated into this whole thing. Right? Yeah, I think early on, first couple games, you know, referring to Manic is, you know, is, is warranted. But it eventually, you just... All right. Yeah, we know that. Let's move on. Reach in foul. Called on Trimble. <laughs> the fans voicing their displeasure on Trimble's second personal. If Trimble can give the Tar Heels a defensive spark on Scott. Offensive foul. Oh, how about that? Now he picks up the foul, comes back with the same intensity, and gets an offensive foul. That's showing a lot from a freshman. Here's the look again. Just great stance. Moving his feet. Same official, Janelle Spearman, they both go both those calls. Nance. Much better job holding his man off inside. They've really given him a lot of space to work in the paint area in this half. Here's the look. Pass up top to seal. And that's, again, what Nance gives you out front. He's a big, big guy. He can pass over the top. Great high-low action. Pete Nance was asked about that exact action by the local media after Monday's game, and he kind of said with a smile, yeah, I don't want to give away the scouting report, but there may be a little bit of an emphasis on getting the ball to the big guy down low. And that's... It. All right, now we're, we're seeing... All right, this is, we talk about the difference in players. Yes, is he a different player? Absolutely, but he's got his own skill set, and you saw it right there, and it ended up in a pretty good basket. I think uh, I think Pete Nance is going to settle in nicely with this group. 107 games at Northwestern. He scored over a thousand points. He made over 100 threes. But again, Brady Manick made almost 100 threes last year for Carolina. A different expectation. Nance actually shot threes at a higher percentage than Manick did a year ago. So you see that? Oh, 45 percent. 6'11 guy that can shoot. Oh, he's going to be the, the next Brady Manic, but it's different. And in many ways, Evan, I think it's it's harder to incorporate an older guy who's been used to being the guy into this system than as opposed to a freshman like a Trimble or a Nickel. You made a great point about that at shoot around today, saying when freshmen come in, even high profile freshmen, there's a little bit of a hierarchy. You know, with the portal, you have such accomplished players joining new teams, it's a different dynamic. Yep, sure is. For the Cougars timeout. This is a guy that's quieted down for the Cougars. Caleb Love kicks Bowen's pocket. Love to Trimble to the basket. <laughs> Largest lead of the night for Carolina. Right, how about this? You got you got Love, you've got Davis, you've got Trimble out on the floor. We talked about that with Hubert Davis and saw that early in the preseason saying we may have something here. And I think North Carolina has found something with that group out on the floor. During the secret scrimmage against Rutgers, Hubert Davis had those three little guys out on the floor, yeah, looked at his assistant and said, yeah, we're going to do yeah. some more of this. But you know what? Trimble's not little. I mean, he's a big guard. He can guard bigger guards out on the floor. And then they, you, you take Davis and Love off the ball, free them up to be scorers. Pretty potent. Foul was called on R.J. Davis. It was number three on R.J. Sending Horton to the line to shoot a one and one.
John Gaffney, the official under the bucket, letting everybody know to cool off. Well, this is, you know, one thing Pat Kelsey talked about today is we want to be the physical team. We don't want to react. We want to be the one out there that's bringing it to North Carolina. So this, thing, this team has not backed down at all in this game in the first 30 minutes. Confident free throw stroke from Rake Juan Horton. Didn't have a free throw in the first game, but it's been perfect so far. Ten points for Horton. Hoods back within four. Baycott working on Lampton. Baycott, chance for a three-point play. To this point, College of Charleston has let him go one-on-one -on -one inside. They had a little bit of a late dig that time, but he's been able to kind of work on his own that time. Lampton on an island, that's a tough task. Especially this second half where Baycott has really come alive offensively. By the way, you think Armando's hairstyle here is designed to look like Ramsey's, the North Carolina mascot? Could be. I, you're going to have to ask him on that one, Evan. <laughs> he's had a lot of different styles yeah, through the years. Yeah, he's had some different dues over the course of his career. We're into the fourth quarter tonight here at the Dean Dome. Tar Heels trail by as many as eight. Now up by six. And Lampton, who just picked up his fourth foul, just turned it over on the walk. Yeah, he was actually passed into that turnover. It was a tough catch for him to make. They're going to bring Fye in, get a little bit smaller, a little more active out on the floor. Carolina by six with the ball. High low. Baycott again. Can't finish the first time, but tips it in. What a second half for Armando Baycott. I really like Nance up in the high post. Babacart five. Fake Baycott out of his sneakers. Lays it in. Solid move. Really got, was under control. Ball fake. Nicely done. And Charleston get a stop. And they got Smith inside on Baycott, and that is not, and they can't, they can't find him though. Caleb Love. Offensive foul. They call it block. Oh, they call it I saw the same thing you did, Mike. But Jamel Spearman saw it differently. Yeah, I thought the, the dip of the shoulder is usually what gets the call, but saw it the other way. And Evan, it's, it's really amazing. This score is the way it is with Rain Smith, three points. And he's, and it's not just, he's only taken four shots. He had 19 against Carolina last year. He had 24 in the season opener on Monday night. And North Carolina has taken him completely out of this game. Caleb Love has gotten to the free throw line a bunch tonight. Seven of ten. Last free throw. Gave him 20 points. Give Smith the rest to the under eight minute timeout here. Try to get him ready for the end of the game. 21 now for Love. Caleb also picked up his fifth assist earlier. Car Heels were undefeated last year when he had at least five dives. See if that streak continues. Ten to shoot. Horton attacks Baycott, who's ready for it. And then Trimble had the block on the stick pack, but the foul going on the Carolina freshman, Seth Trimble. Number three. Twelfth offensive rebound of the game so far for Charleston. That's what's kept them close to this point as well. You know, you look at it, they're not shooting it bad at 9 of 17 in this half. Carolina 13 of 17. Maybe a little defense for Leakey coming back in, replacing Trimble. Hey, 
you get you get defense for defense there, but you know with Lincoln Black on the, out on the perimeter more so. I, I really like that three guard combination for North Carolina. Five goes one for two. Tar Heels trailed by seven at the half. Up seven right now. Love is just feeling it. Can't connect though. Larson the rebound. Larson baseline. Slam back in on the stick back. A little bit smaller, but Fly is giving them a lift on the offensive glass. Cougar just will not go away completely. Beautiful kick out pass. Love. Foul's going on Jalen Scott for Charleston here. Take us to a timeout with 7.38 to go. North Carolina, a five point lead. Number one, North Carolina, in the midst of a four game season opening homestand, have a five point lead with just under eight to play. Trailed by as many as eight in the first half. A lot of new uh, faces and teams in the Colonial, but uh, Towson, a very good team this year. But I think this team is going to, they're going to make some noise in that conference as well. I think so. Davis talked about you know this is this is, this is a first second year for me yeah. you know, going through that first year and all the things that he faced from beginning to end a lot for a first year coach especially at this program to deal with and he just dealt with it so so well but this uh, you know, different different year different challenges Larson rejected Caleb Love skies for the block. Love in transition, where he's at his best. Well, when he's running downhill, there's just, uh, you know, he can go both ways, but when he gets to that right hand, he'll finish more, more times than not. Big shot for five. Nope. Davis tracks down the miss. Inside, Baycott had it poked away. Common question that Hubert Davis is getting, you know, what's the biggest difference from last year to this year? And he doesn't want to make it sound like he knows everything now just because it's year two. Because as you okay. said, in Hubert's words, this is his first ever second year as a head coach, and it's different. Everything's different. You just hear Hubert telling Pete to shoot it. Instead, he drove and kicked. Leaky Black will shoot it. And he'll shoot two at the line. Yeah, that was a tough bailout foul. And Black was going to have a tough time converting. And uh, Alja Charleston did him a favor by fouling him. I don't know if Pete Nance heard his head coach. But what do you think of the coach yelling, shoot it, Pete? Yeah, he's going to hear that a lot, I think, early on in the year. And, uh, you know, he, he talked to us about, you know, I may have to step up and and run some plays for him and, and get him involved that way. Maybe force feeding him a little bit into the offense. College of Charleston won their first game on Monday over Chattanooga, a game in which the Cougars made more free throws than the mocks attempted. You can flip that storyline tonight. North Carolina, 20 of 30 at the line. They've missed 10 free throws. 
but they've made twice as many more than twice as many as Charleston has attempted well on the road and the way these two teams are constructed you you know it was kind of, not a good, you didn't think it would be the same result Leaky Black scored 10 in the first half. He has not scored yet in the second half. Until now. And that's okay. You know, it was, it was a great job by him of stepping up in that first half and, and carrying the load offensively. And now he can do other things that he does so well. Love has 23. Baycott has 20. This is the largest lead of the night. Although Robinson able to crawl the Cougars closer. Sky report, you got to know he's left-handed. Wants to get that way off the dribble. And we'll shade that a little bit. Baycott power dribble. Excellent defense by Poland. Came in on the low side on the double and got him on the dribble. Under six to play. Only one made three in the second half for Charleston. Good quick hands there by Baycott. Davis finds some daylight in the corner. RJ then turns it over. Robinson the other way. Lost it. Carolina ball. Yeah, bad decision. One on two that time. Didn't have numbers. You got to pull it out and wait for some help to come behind you. And they still, Rainsmith still sitting on the bench. Timeout. Tar Heels will take the timeout. Hubert Davis wants to chat. Hubert Davis, one of 50 coaches currently leading a D1 program at his alma mater. One of four in the ACC. And very few of a player like Baycott. Uh, Mando Baycott, one point, one rebound in that first half. Completely different story here. High-low action, getting him deep position inside. 19 points so far in the second 20 minutes. Good follow on that miss. Interesting nugget. 5.28 to go. The College of Charleston bench has scored more points than the starters have. I, and to, to be honest, I don't think that that's going to be an unusual stat for this team as this season unfolds. Um, you know, granted, you're not going to have a, a ton of games where your leading scorer, Rain Smith, has, has been effectively taken out of the game. That being said, like, I, you know, I said earlier in the game, when they go to their bench, they don't lose a whole lot. Acott still needs four rebounds in the final 528 to pick up his 50th career double-double. Currently third in North Carolina history in that department. Chasing the great Billy Cunningham, the kangaroo kid who had 60 double-doubles in the 60s. And probably played about half of the teams, too. Different era. Yep. He was way ahead of his time. Unbelievable athlete. Tend to shoot here for a pretty good athlete in love. The Black. Black takes it. Takes it. Um, all started early. Knocked down those threes that they were daring him to shoot. And he's had a lot of confidence in his offense. Burnham has nine points off the bench. Robinson has five. He's got five seconds to shoot. Working on Davis. Gets two. Their, their guards can get inside. They're strong. They can get in off the dribble and work inside. But, uh, you know, for North Carolina, I think they're, they're just fine defending them off the three-point line at this point. Do you think other teams will look at this Carolina film and see that there's a weakness going guard on guard inside? Well, I mean, if you have the guards who can do that, yes. <laughs> Caleb 
Now one for nine from three in the game. Air ball from Berzovich, but kept alive on the baseline by Burnham. Second effort wouldn't fall, though. And Love has his eighth rebound of the night. Yeah, those were shots and plays that they were scoring on in the first half that they have not been able to convert in during this stretch for North Carolina. Daycock could not make the clean catch, but he was bailed out. Berzovic fouled him from behind. Timeout with 3.32 to play. Number one by seven. Really defended the three. The College of Charleston, one of seven in this half after making only si after making six threes in that first half. Well, you know, last year when these two teams played, Carolina won, but Charleston had a lead for more minutes in the game. And it's the same story tonight. Charleston has led for longer than Carolina, but Tar Heels have to like their spot up seven with 332 remaining. And Baycott at the line. 20 in the second half, 21 for the game. For the senior from Richmond. Twenty-two and six for Baycott. Big possession for the Cougars. Massive. They've been answering uh, for most of the game. They go to Burnham. Baycott is there for the defense. One on one off the dribble too. Black. Oh, that was a big sequence right there. The good defensive stand and it turns into two points. Get another turnover. This is what the fans were expecting. Much tighter rotation for North Carolina in this second half. Fewer substitutions. Better defense. A lot more energy. Here's where you want to see him go. Go to work. There yes, you go. There you go. Put the whole side of the floor to work with. No double team. Good patience. Seven points for Nance. Cougars now one of eight from three in the second half. Free throws coming at the other end. Third personal on Burnham. This is, you know, games like this, again, we talk about, you know, working into the lineup. You know, we, I think we've seen a step forward for Nance. You've definitely seen a step for Trimble. You know, I, I think he's really gained, he's, the coaching staff gaining a lot of confidence in him in game situations. And Tyler Nickel made a nice contribution this evening as well. So just a few miles away, Duke beat USC Upstate by 46 earlier tonight. Now Upstate is not the quality of a team that Charleston is. What's the importance and value of North Carolina getting pushed like they were this evening? Well, you know, you, there's nothing like the game. There, there is nothing like game situations and uh, you know this was a this was a terrific non-conference opponent to play at home. Bowling thought he was fouled. Officials do not agree. <laughs> Dalton Bowling had 14 in the first half, but he's only got two since. Tar Heels on an 8-0 run to really put this thing away. North Carolina will host Gardner Webb, the running Bulldogs out of the Big South, coached by Tim Kraft. They'll be here on Tuesday. RJ Davis can't connect. Come on, 
Strong take by Pat Robinson, the third. He's got nine. And Pat Kelsey takes a quick timeout. We will take it two. 95 seconds left. We are back inside the Dean Smith Center with number one North Carolina possessing a 13-point lead. Four nights ago, UNC won its 18th consecutive season opener. And now, buck 35 away from a 2-0 start. Gardner-Webb, James Madison next week before the trip to the Pacific Northwest and the Phil Knight Classic out in Portland. Uh, and some, some pretty stout competition out there as well. Opening game will be against the University of Portland and then either Iowa State or Villanova. And then the third game will be either Alabama, Yukon, Michigan State, or Oregon. Villanova, it's a, a new era there as Jay Wright stepping down after last season. A little bit of a surprise to me, actually. Kyle Neptune taking over. Michigan State fell just short against number two Gonzaga tonight. The Zags win at 64-63 over Tom Izzo's Spartans in the uh, Armed Forces Classic. Played on the aircraft carrier on this Veterans Day. And it would be remiss if we didn't wish all the veterans out there a happy Veterans Day. Played that game on the USS Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, it's an awesome venue when they do that. Don't forget Monmouth, Virginia coming up. Davis to make up for the exclamation point here in Chapel Hill tonight. Robinson with just the second three of the half for College of Charleston. Too little, too late. And the kick ball in the inbounds. Under a minute here. But it's really the defensive intensity was the difference in the two halves. I mean, they, they came out, the North Carolina came out second half, and they were breathing fire. And they got off to a quick start, and uh, it's carried over for the, for the entire half. Pat Kelsey is saying they can't travel in the inbounds pass. Timeout was called by Carolina. Dance was running the baseline like it was after a made bucket. It was the second inbounds pass after the make with a kick ball previously. Anyway, not going to be the difference in the game. You mentioned the defensive intensity is a key difference in the second half. What about Baycott's first half versus Baycott's second half? Well, and they, they made a concerted effort to get him touches. Um, I, I just thought that they let College of Charleston get into a nice rhythm in that first half. You know, they were seeing a big basket. They were doing whatever they wanted to do offensively. But uh, that first five minutes, North Carolina set a different tone, and they spread the floor. They got Baycott some touches deep in the paint. He converted and uh, was a different player. And I, I think, again, they they found a nice combination with that high-low with, with Nance up at the, at the top of the key. I think eventually he's going to be taking that shot. G-Man through two games, almost two full games. The Tar Heels are seven for 30 from three. 23%. Are you concerned at all about that? And that's that's going to be an issue again for you know the absence of Manic was a big part of their three-point shooting last year. Sounds like you are a little concerned. It's, yeah, I mean it's not, and you know for for that matter for for a lot of you know his great teams for Roy Williams three-point shooting was not a huge part of their arsenal. They relied on tempo, pace of play. You know they're. They're still putting 96 up on the board with only five made threes in this game. Oh, that's, that's North Carolina basketball. 
Last year when these two teams played, Roy Williams was down in Charleston too, sitting next to the legendary Cougars coach, John Press. Who has been a huge mentor for Pat Kelsey, and, and nobody has really gained any traction down there since John Press, which I'm a little surprised at, but I think, I think Pat's got a chance to do that. Had some good coaches. Obviously, Bobby Cremens was there for six seasons. Earl Grant most recently. But that, you know, Bobby was not for the long haul. Huh? You know, he, he was not going to stay there 20 plus years. Earl Grant used it as a springboard to the ACC, moving to Boston College. BC's 2-0, two close wins. Eagles beat uh, Cornell on a last-second shot. And that's Detroit right, Mercy that's today. Right mercy today. They're a banged up team. They need to get healthy. UCF beating Florida State, giving them a, their second loss of the yeah. season. Seminoles are on two. Clemson lost their Palmetto State rivalry to South Carolina, so the Tigers take their first loss of the year tonight as well. R.J. Davis circles the wagons. Pat Kelsey wants the Cougars to maintain the pressure. Caleb Love. And Big Pat finishes the Cougars off with a slam. The nation's fourth largest college basketball arena is mighty loud right now. Caleb Love all by himself. Kaboom! Right in the ho hum, Caleb Love. 23, nine rebounds, six assists. On a night he went one of nine from three. Tar Heels concede the final two of the night, more than likely. The number one team in the land is 2-0. 102 to 86 as Hubert Davis gets his 31st win at the helm of the Tar Heels. Really, really liked what I saw that second half. Um, tightened up the rotation. You know, I think Pete Nance starting to feel his way through into this lineup, his niche out on the floor. You know, Baycott giving him touches inside, and then uh, Caleb Love was Caleb Love. He was